Hello everyone, Oregon Moto John. I'm excited to uh, do something with uh, my air filter today. Um, we have a paper filter for the 890, we, which is, uh, there's a part nine number there. We have a foam filter that we need to oil. And we have some Maxima Fab One um, spray on filter oil. I usually use like a bucket or something, but with this, this is what's going to work best because this doesn't have any foam that pulls out. It's all glued in there, which makes you wonder how cleaning that will go later. But anyway, that's a, another another thing to talk about. So this is one that I had for my 790. Um, it should fit the 890, so we'll find out. I believe they're the same part number. Um, so, paper or foam? The foam filter versus paper filter debate. Let's uh, get some good feedback here. Foam generally is what you use, oiled foam is what you generally use on dirt bikes, and this does not come oiled, so make sure you have oil. The instructions cl clearly state that it um, requires a minimum of 1.3 ounces of uni foam filter oil to meet manufacturer's recommendations. If you don't do it, you're going to hurt your motor, which I'm sure is true. Um, so, foam and oil is good for dirt bike applications and where there's high dust. And I will say this looks like a really nice filter, a good quality filter. Um, the downside is I typically don't run reusable filters on my cars and things because it can, um, the mass airflow sensor, it tends to um, cause problems with that little filament wire in there. So I tend to avoid those, generally speaking, with, with lots of vehicles that I own. However, with this, I just don't know enough about the map, how the mass airflow sensor works, if it's a filament style or what what it has in there. Um, so paper, I do like paper. You don't mess with it. You don't clean it. You just throw it away, put a new one in, you're done. Um, I might put some grease around the lip if I use it. But that being said, I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I do think an oil filter is better at keeping out dust. So if you're going to be in a really dusty condition, I probably would go with this. We're in, we're in summer now, so I'm probably leaning towards putting in this one. Um, but I want, I've been riding in dust. So what I'm probably going to do is actually let the bike make the decision. You know, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to open this up today. I've been riding in dust and I'm going to see if any, um, particulates are going past the in the air filter and getting into the intake. If they are, that makes the decision easy. Then we're going to put in, um, oil. If it looks pretty good with the paper, it may, maybe I'll stick with paper just because it's easy. Um, and I, I just don't like messing with cleaning foam and, and I just I guess I'm getting lazy. I don't mind maintaining stuff, but I don't like cleaning foam oily filters. I've done plenty of that and I just, I'm getting to where I prefer just to throw it away and put a new one in <clears throat> and be done. So let's go ahead. Um, first step is this bike has like 1400 miles on it roughly now and I've been driving it roughly a year. So the first step is we're just going to remove this seat. Obviously you guys know how to do that. Key in there, turn it, we'll pop this off. Now this has the heated seat, so I'm gonna be removing a few electrical connectors in there. Um, so let's remove our seat now. So with the heated seat option, it's just a matter of pulling up the pylon seat, pulling up this, lightly pulling out this connector, which you can see going up to this front seat. And we'll just go ahead and unplug this connector and then I'll be able to completely remove the seat. Okay, already I'm leaning towards uh, um, a foam filter. Look at how dusty it is in here. I mean, it is dusty. So, um, yeah. And, and by the way, to remove the seat, once I got that uh, this connector unplugged, which I had just tucked up underneath here, um, you just pull up on the seat, and then um, this comes up and back, and, and it comes off. So, um, I'm just going to take a rag and wipe wipe off some of this dust, clean it up before I start pulling things apart so I don't introduce dust into the intake or dirt. And many of you guys know I love Lemon Pledge for uh, just getting dust and debris off of areas. It just helps the dust stick to it. And then it just creates a um, something that it just fills the pores of the plastic a little bit and plus it makes this wet so that it actually attracts the dust and dirt. Um, so I'm a big fan of, of Pledge for doing this. Um, it's just good for attracting dust. That's what it's made for. Just clean everything up around your air box. This is where your air box is back here. So spend a little extra time wiping around back here. 
Okay, I did end up removing my pylon seat. It was just a matter of unplugging. If you have a heated seat, this connector near the back of it, it just kind of pulls forward. It's indexed in these little marks right, right here. Um, and the seat just pulls out and forward and up and then unplug it. And so it's just gonna be easier to access these two Torx bit screws, um, one there and one there. And then this will be setting here. You'll just lift that up and, and out of the way. And here's where our filter is right there. And it looks like uh, these screws, it's a it's a T, Torx bit T30. So you're just gonna take a T30 and remove this one. And then you're gonna come over here and remove that one. So they're just hand tight. Just go ahead and remove those now. Once you have um, both these screws out, just look at the orientation of these wires under this clip because we are gonna be taking this off. And it should just be a matter of lifting up on the back of this where there's a indentation, it kind of pulls forward. And then there you are, you're in. And here's our, um, here's our air filter right there. You can see there's the back side where the air is coming in through the snorkels up here. See a snorkel here and a, also a dual snorkel over here. And then those run up and the air hits this and then runs into the motor. Um, kind of see both of them. Here's a snorkel here intake, pulling from this area back in here that I just kind of cleaned out into the intake. Air kind of passes through and keeps going into the motor. Now, obviously an air filter is important. Clean oil is important, but so is clean air. If you're sucking dirt into your intake, I've seen motors ruined by sucking dirt into the motor because it's going to run it in, into your valves, into your motor. So you want, you want this clean and it's easy to get it. You pull your seat, you're there, so you might as well inspect it. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get that air filter out of there. I changed the air filter on my 791, so I'm somewhat familiar with this. So I'm gonna turn this so that it's easier for you to see. So what you've got is there's this little handle back here and this kind of forces down and wedges in and then pushes the filter up against the intake. So you just get in here and I'm putting counter pressure of my thumb down on this front piece. See how there's two, two halves there? You have this piece and this piece, these are separate. So I'm gonna pull up here as I'm pushing down over there and wiggle. And I'm just wiggling. I'm trying to get to where I can actually show you guys what I'm doing here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. There it goes, and there it goes. Okay, then this piece comes out, okay? Um, you can see how it's tapered, so when it goes in, it pushes that air filter up against the intake there. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Keep in mind that the back portion goes to the back so you can get your fingers under it to remove it. So just make a note of that. We'll wipe this off, make sure it's clean before it goes back in. And we'll wipe off the inside of this, although it looks pretty clean. Then it's just a matter of grabbing this little piece here and pulling out your filter. That's not bad, really. Okay, a little bit of dust back here, but it's that's external. And um, looking in here, okay. Um, so what we're looking at is, see the intake side is clean. The side on the outside is dirty, lots of dust. So um, it, this is doing the job. It's not letting particulates through. Let me. Let me get in there and look a little closer. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not seeing a bunch of um, particles in my intake. You know, it's very dusty on the outside, but I'm not seeing anything in the intake side. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with paper just for ease of, of maintenance for right now. I'm um, sorry, I'm trying to get a good angle here. So you can see... In the box here, um, very dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just vacuum this out, wipe it out. Just be careful that you don't let anything fall on into your intake. So just take your time. And, and I'm gonna use some um, some shop towels here. And then when you put your new, get ready for your new filter, I am gonna put a, 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 some filter grease around the edge of this seam here um, on both sides where it butts up. Because if there's gonna be a leak, I think that's where there's gonna be a leak. So I'm gonna put a little bead of grease um, all around here in the ceiling rim and around here because when i open up this filter though it actually it, it looks pretty good i mean i could have ran this a little longer it's a part so I'm, I'm gonna change it filters are cheap compared to a motor 
Um, and then do pay attention to the orientation of this. This, you know, kind of goes like that. Intake side, outside side. So let's go ahead. I got a, I got a little vacuum and I'm going to vacuum out in here. I'm going to use some shop towels and wipe around in here. Get this nice and clean. I may even put a rag in here, a clean one on the intake side so that I don't let stuff fall in there while I'm cleaning all this out. So let's go ahead and just do some cleanup work now. So as I was um, vacuuming around down in here, um, you can see that there's these drop through little rubber booties here. So I'm gonna make sure I wipe out down here, get this vacuumed out or wiped out. Same thing over here. It's a natural place for debris to drop through. And I'm gonna take a little rubbing alcohol um, and just wipe around in here. I put a rag in here so stuff if it does fall in my intake gets caught. I'll wipe around in there with a clean rag. I won't go from here and wipe and then go in there because that's the intake clean side. It's almost like your motor. Nothing should contaminate that. So I'm going to wipe out this with one rag, get it nice and clean, use another one. And then when I'm satisfied with this, then I'll get a new shop towel and I'll make sure it's clean. And we're going to go on the inside and just wipe around on the, on the inside of the intake. So go ahead and let's just spend some time cleaning this all out. We're in here. Might as well do it right. So this is for the non-intake side. The outside, I just have my spray bottle with some rubbing alcohol and I'm going to spray that on there. And then I'm going to take that and wipe around on the inside of my, um, of my air box here and get that nice and clean. Because your air is coming through here first. You might as well get this clean before you um, stick everything back together. I mean, you're in here. You're putting a new filter in. Might as well let your bike have the best chance of uh, getting this clean. And then I'll have a place for the dirt to drop again instead of going towards your filter. So, you know, getting a lot of dust out of there. But I am happy with how the, what the, the, that filter did. Now, I'm not saying the oil filter, oil filter isn't a bad thing to use. I may at some point switch, but it wasn't penetrated today. So I feel like if it's doing that good of a job, then we might as well keep going with it. But if it was really dusty conditions, I do think the oiled filter would be a better option. I'm doing this because it's matching. I'm using the non-oiled one today because it's matching what um, my riding style is. It's not penetrating the intake and it's easy for me to swap out. So I'm going to stick with that for right now. And, and I'll be back in here, um, you know, uh, and, and down the road to, to double check. Oh, this is a work in progress. Um, one thing about bike maintenance, always just be you know paying attention to your bike and if something's working i usually stick with it and if it quits working then i i'm not opposed to switching so i did take a clean rag and wipe around on the inside of my intake on the clean side and there's just a little motor oil in there i mean you have the breather system which comes up and um you know helps the uh, crankcase ventilation so i mean um, it's not uncommon to find a little oil in your air box. Just, I'm talking, it was just residue on the bottom of it. Um, just oil. So if you find a little bit, you're fine. But if you found copious amounts, then, uh, you know, probably, I probably would, you know, follow up with your dealer and investigate. But, um, I just had a little bit of, um, it's hard to see in there. But there's a little bit of, you can probably see it right down there. There's a little oil residue. Um, it's not dirty. It's just a little residue down there. So I'll, I'll be sure and get all that out before I button this up. And the airbox tipped backwards, so it's going to drain to the back, which is which is good. So this is what this looks like now with the airbox wiped out there and on the inside. I've wiped off this piece. I've wiped off those pieces. There's kind of some of the rags I used. Now we're going to take our filter. Looks like it has LX925-1. Um, this 6030, 611500 appears to be the right filter. It's the same as the old one that, that came out. So now we're just going to put this um, framework around this filter again. Um, just like so. Okay. Just like that. Okay, let's back up a second. Let's put a bead of either like Maxima waterproof grease or I have some Honda foam filter air sealer grease. Let's put a bead of that around here on all those edges and we're going to put a bead just I'm talking just a light smearing around this top edge so when this clamps in it's kind of got a little 
bead. I, I don't see a bunch of stuff going through the paper, but it can sometimes sneak around here. So let's go ahead and do that before we put that on. Putting the grease around there isn't a KTM thing. This is more of a John thing from uh, just dirt bike history. If you put a bead of grease around a filter, um, the seal, then it's if the if the dust tries to seep around the filter edge, the grease will catch it. It'll get caught in the grease. So that's why I'm doing this. And it, it doesn't take a lot. I use the blue grease, uh, Maxima grease, just so you could kind of see that I'm putting the bead around here, um, as well as on the the inside there. Not on the filter itself, not on the filter media itself. Okay, now we put this piece on um, with the open area towards the back of the filter because remember how we slip that off the bike? And then this intake side will be towards the bike. So remember how this is going to just kind of slide in there? So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here's how this goes. We've got this wider taper here, and then we're just going to kind of slide and drop that in. Wiggle it a little bit, keep this inside that housing, wiggle it, wiggle it, and there. That just nestles in there really well, really well. And make sure your filter is still sitting, um, you know, inside um, right, right here. Let's get a better angle. So like I was saying before, make sure your filter stays inside the frame. See how the frame can pull away? We want that up in there. And we want this pushed all the way down. This is seated all the way down. So that's why I kind of wiggled it as I put it in there. Everything is all the way to the bottom of that intake because the next piece is going to wedge everything up and against this. So first we have to make sure everything is pushed down, down into that intake. Then the next piece tapers and against the other piece and pushes it up against it and completes the seal. And with that grease, I feel very good about this being a, a very good fit. If, if you ever get confused on this, just remember the open end goes to the back. Um, on this so you can get a hold of it and then likewise on this trim piece the open end always goes to the back so you can get your finger under to it so you can see how there's a little um, a little notch here okay see that notch that's going to index into this this right here on both sides and I did put a skim of grease on this plastic trim piece just to make it a little easier to snap in there so now we're just going to Take this and holding this down, holding this down, the front piece down here, I'm going to push this other piece up into place until it kind of just snaps. And then we have actually a very good, good tight fit there. You can see how that filter is snugged up in there. The intake is nice and snug along here. And um, I feel good about that. I do think using grease is a good idea. Now this side over here looks like I could maybe push it down a little more. So let's get that into position. So to get this into position, I just kind of pushed on the bottom of that and that thing, make sure this is flush. These two bike clave pieces are flush with each other. They, they, should be, they should be flush. And everything looks good. The filters inside the housing. Our intake is wiped clean on the outside and the inside and we have a nice grease barrier there so nothing can get around the edges of the filter um i think we can feel good that we did a we did a good job here so now it's just a matter of replacing the seat document uh when you changed your filter sometimes i'll write on the filter the date i put it in just on the side of the media um, on the outside and uh, but in this case i'll just make a note on my phone as well as a condition of the intake so i can keep track of my work and um, now it's just a matter of putting the little top cover on. So this is going to go on the same way it came off, um, which is just kind of this front lip is going to go in first to catch this lip under, under here. So we'll just kind of catch that front lip under that, making sure we get um, the wires that are supposed to be under there, under there. I'm going to catch both wires over here and like so and then this goes on top so make sure you get your wires on top that should be on top so this goes on top over here and these wires can go underneath over here well it's my heated seat wire I might as well get it under there too there we go I got that 
heated seat wire underneath this and this is snapped down on the front and the back now it's just a matter of putting these in these are going into just uh, some kind of copper fastening and plastic so I wouldn't go overly tight with these things just hand snug okay so then just you know a little bit of a light snug there a little bit of a light snug here and that's that's all those need I wouldn't go gorilla tight with those that's it um, so there you have it um, so what do I think well I think for mixed riding highway gravel roads the paper element with grease around the edges is probably good however if you're going to be extremely dusty conditions man that paper filter might start getting penetrated um, I think KTM even talked about that a little bit but so far my intake looks good and uh, on my 790 I put about eh, 50, 800, 6,000 miles on that bike and I, it never was penetrated with the paper filter. So, so far so good. Um, will I at some point put the foam filter in? I might, I'm gonna keep it. I'm just gonna put it away, I'm not gonna oil it. Um, but the paper filter wasn't bad. And even without grease, I didn't see dust getting around the, um, the filter. The intake side, side looks good on the filter and in the intake itself. So. As long as I don't see that being penetrated, I'm going to stick with the um, uh, the paper one just because it's easier. You don't have to get solvent out and you know clean the filter. It's just a matter of throwing the old filter away, putting the new one in, documenting when you did it. Um, but like I said, that's subject, subject to change. I'm open to change because sometimes you, you, you learn things, things aren't working, or your driving conditions change. So um, that being said, always just... Uh, you know, we want to pay attention, mechanics, we, we want to pay attention to what we're doing. And if something changes, then sometimes we have to change what we're doing. So I'm, I'm open to that, open to learning. Hey, all you guys, chime in what you found. Um, so now to button this up, let's just put this back where it was, kind of nestled in there. We're going to put our pylon seat back on. It'll, it'll plug into to this back one, and then we'll put it into place. And then we'll get our, um, this is if you have heated seats, if you don't you have to worry about this, then we'll plug this one in to the front seat. And then we'll index this in here. And then I'll use this indexed on the um, heated seat. There's two little notches and I'll use the one that's lower so I get this as short as possible since I'm on the shorter side of the spectrum. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for listening to me. Hope that helps you guys. Remember a clean intake makes for a clean motor. You don't want to change your oil and then forget to change your um your air filter and be sucking junk into your motor that'll cook a motor quicker than anything um just a footnote years ago i was buying a used quad a honda 450 for the dunes and uh this guy had an atv that looked pretty good it was okay marge well it was actually just okay and uh, i asked can i pull the seat and look at your air filter i pulled the seat and I looked at his air filter and it was one of a, a reusable k and n and i'm not anti k and n although um, I think those can be a problem if they're not maintained. But anyway, um, it was so dirty that, that that killed the sale right there. It looked like it had never been changed, like never. It was caked with dirt and dust and sand, and I'm surprised the bike even ran. Um, and I said, I'm sorry, I, it killed the sale. I, I just said, I'm sorry, I can't buy this bike. And he's like, well, I'll take you know, $35 off for the uh, air filter. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I, I'm not worried about the price of the air filter. I'm worried about the price of a motor. So, yeah, he wasn't happy with me, and I felt bad. But I just, as you guys have noticed, I like to do things a certain way. And I either like to do it right or not at all. And, and I didn't want to rebuild the motor or have one rebuilt. So, um, you know, it's better just to do it right and maintain your machine. And then I just, knock on wood, haven't had any motor failures any engines that burned oil i just haven't had any major failures of any component of a bike ever or a quad or a car but um i've been meticulous about oil changes and air filters if you do those two things uh, i think it goes a long way so that's just my rant on clean oil and and a clean a clean air filter so as you can see no reason to have your dealer do this it's two screws this pulls off you pull up the back piece the air filter pulls out you change the frame to the new housing after you wipe everything out, get it nice and clean. Put a little bead of grease around your air filter, put it back together, screws in, seat on. Um, document when you did it. That's all there is to it. So um, thanks for listening. 
Um, we'll, we'll try to keep the videos coming on little things that we do to this, this bike, maintenance-wise and otherwise. Um, I forgot to mention, I'm liking the uh, Galfer rotors. I, I just happened to swap my wheel set and it ha I added these Galfer um, wave rotors. And the main reason I did is I thought they looked cool, but uh, I saw the rally bike had them. So I thought, well, that just looks cool. Um, but uh, they seem to bite really well. You just have to be careful because they do bite probably a little better. Not too much. The brakes still modulate good, but um, anyway, they, they look good. So just a footnote, sorry to bore you guys with stuff, but if you're bike crazy like me, here's the rear wave rotor for the back, what it looks like. Not as drastic of a change as the front, but um, kind of fun. All right. Well, hope you all are doing well. Have a great day. Keep riding. Enjoy. And so the 790 air filter fits the 890 perfectly. The intakes are the same. This was the same size as well. This um, oiled air filter. Part number there, if that helps. Um, and part number there again. All right. Sorry to keep belaboring this air filter change, but I feel strongly about air filters, and um, I've just seen it cause trouble. Have a great day. Keep riding. Be safe. And... Uh, yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, Oregon Moto John. I'm excited to uh, do something with uh, my air filter today. Um, we have a paper filter for the 890, we, which is, uh, there's a part nine number there. We have a foam filter that we need to oil. And we have some Maxima Fab One um, spray on filter oil. I usually use like a bucket or something, but with this, this is what's going to work best because this doesn't have any foam that pulls out. It's all glued in there, which makes you wonder how cleaning that will go later. But anyway, that's a, another another thing to talk about. So this is one that I had for my 790. Um, it should fit the 890, so we'll find out. I believe they're the same part number. Um, so paper or foam? 